Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as we get started, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all the effort you're putting into this as you are striving to get ready for and pass the NPTE, whether you're PT or PTA. I know that it's a lot of work and you are, you are I, I guess I've said it before, but just another reminder this is the perfect intersection of your skills and your interest. So remember that you're really good at this. So as you go through the test and as you're going through practice questions, just remember this is something that you are good at and that you like this stuff. And so hopefully that takes a little bit of the pain away from the study process, which granted is a lengthy and somewhat difficult process, you could say. It's still something worth doing. And I appreciate what you're doing, not only for yourself, but also for the profession. So I know that here in a very short while, as you pass and pass the exam and move on to your career, that you'll join the ranks and just be be my colleague on this side of the of the NPTE. So as we get started, we do have a practice question for you. Just a quick reminder, though, that there are two freebies we've got for you. Number one, the regenerative medicine course that will be concluding here very quickly. So be sure to sign up ASAP at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. Plus, if you want to join us, want to join us for our free weekend in Chicago, that'll be around, it'll be essentially March 1st and 2nd. So it starts on February 29th through March 2nd. You can register for that free event. Uh, you can find, again, all that information at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. All right, so today we'll be talking through a practice question. This is related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system on the exam. So this is the third largest single system on the exam going through content from examination to differential diagnosis and interventions for a total of 22 to 27 questions related to cardiovascular and pulmonary. So I've got a practice question for you related to our left ventricular assist devices. I will jump right into that. As per our usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Here we go. Which of the following precautions is most appropriate to implement during physical therapy interventions with a patient with an impl implanted left ventricular assist device. So which of the following precautions is most appropriate to implement during physical therapy interventions with a patient with an implanted left ventricular assist device? Number one, avoid excessive trunk forward flexion. Number two, avoid early ambulatory exercise after implantation. Number three, Keep exertion levels below eight, eight out of 20 RPE. And four, keep patient supine for as much as possible for the first seven days following implantation. So again, the question is, which of the following precautions is most appropriate to implement during physical therapy interventions with a patient with an implanted left ventricular assist device? Number one, avoid excessive trunk forward flexion. Number two, avoid early ambulatory exercise after implantation. Number three, keep exertion levels below eight out of 20 RPE. And number four, keep patient supine for as much as possible for the first seven days following implantation. All right, so this question related to left ventricular assist devices. Now, the premise or the principle of the LVAD is that it is very helpful to increase cardiac output, especially in a patient with congestive heart failure or some type of heart failure. So to improve cardiac output, this left ventricular assist device, so it's a mechanical device that is placed in the circulatory system so as to help with the pumping and movement of blood. Now, there are multiple different configurations of this. Now, most of the time, they are implanted somewhere in, in or near the aorta. Uh, sometimes you can get them implanted somewhere in the leg and the femoral arteries, but generally speaking, they're implanted so as to help with the increasing the mean arterial pressure. And so this implanted device is, is somewhat sensitive to changes of position, especially with uh, excessive trunk flexion. So as you consider the device, the device is, is essentially just a tube with several, a pump with several tubes attached to it. There's also some wiring and an external battery harness that, that you can keep the, the item or keep the LVAD energized. So the purpose here is that the driveline mechanism of the LVAD can become twisted or kinked with excessive trunk movements, especially twisting and forward flexion. And so therefore you would want to avoid excessive trunk forward flexion. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have the patient do a little bit during some type of functional activity. However, it will probably be a modified version of say sitting up from supine to sit 
or sit to stand, you'd want to avoid excessive trunk flexion. Again, that's because you don't want to any, don't want to create any twist or kink in the the left ventricular assist device, which again, multiple configurations, but generally speaking, there's usually a pump with several tubes associated with it near the aorta, which as you can imagine, things could go awry quite quickly if you displaced that somehow. So also of note there, you'd want to avoid excessive upper extremity exercise during immediately following the, the implantation. This is because you could damage the insertion site, which is usually near the rib cage, near or at the rib cage. So again, much like our sternal precautions, we'd be cautious with upper extremity exercise here. These other incorrect answer options. So number two, avoid early ambulatory exercise after implantation. Uh, rather than that, you are encouraged to perform early mobility and ambulation. These are both safe and can be initiated during the patient's ICU stay. So that's cool about these devices is once they're implanted, they generally stay put as long as you don't twist or flex the trunk too much. So early ambulation would be permitted. Uh, option three, which is related to exertion levels, they should be kept at or below 13, somewhere usually between 11 and 13 on the RPE scale. So eight is excessively low. You can go as high as 11 to 13. Again, you don't want to go into the very hard category, so above 13, but you still want to permit some type of aerobic conditioning. And so therefore, Hilligas suggests that 11 to 13 is a good target for your aerobic exercise intervention rating of perceived exertion scale. And then finally, the last one related, we've already talked about it essentially, but keep the patient supine for as much as possible during the first seven days. That's incorrect. Early mobility and ambulation are both safe and can be performed and initiated during the patient's ICU stay and beyond, certainly. So the key here, and this does persist throughout all of your interventions, is you'd want to avoid excessive trunk flexion or twisting so as so to to avoid disturbing the LVAD, the left ventricular assist device. And again, these comes in multiple these come in multiple configurations. I don't want to say there's the most common one, but I, I would say that probably very commonly it's associated and inserted with the aorta so as to improve cardiac output and assist the left ventricle. So it's like a, an extra pump to push blood in addition to what the left ventricle is pushing. And all that to say that you as a PT, you certainly can initiate your intervention, but the key here is just to avoid excessive fatigue and, and uh, avoid twisting or forward flexion. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. I hope you check out all the other episodes we've got over here on the NPT podcast. And if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Stay safe out there. We'll crane fist pumps all around. Have a fabulous day.